Do you really have any idea how to break Minecraft? I mean, it's easy to modify the game's code and force it to break, much like what happened in my last video where I covered why I feel Mojang is going to delete the world border soon. It's also possible to abuse creative mode or commands in ways that were never intended as well. But what if someone asked you to break Minecraft purely in survival mode? What then? Can Minecraft even be broken this way at all? Well, as it turns out, yes. Yes, it can. A lot. And today, I'm going to tell you the story of one of the many different ways that Minecraft gets broken all the time by teams like Prototech. Today, we are going to travel to all 12 of Minecraft's world borders in one day purely in survival mode. What normally would take years of non-stop travel to perform, we can do in a day. Actually, less than a day. Just about an hour or so. Now, before you call foul and suspect that commands, hacks, or exploits were somehow involved with setting this up, well, let's just say that everything that lies ahead was set up and executed in unmodified, vanilla, survival Minecraft. No hacks, no commands, nothing. So let's go ahead and let's check this out. So let the story begin. On July 11th, 2020, Ray's Works from the Prototech Minecraft server and quite the YouTuber himself invited me onto the server to be the first guest to travel to all 12 world borders. Four in the overworld, four in the nether, four in the end. First things first, this server is insane. These people are insane. They make the ways in which I show off and break Minecraft look like child's play. It's not just that the server is well designed. It's not that they have a machine for everything. It's that if there is a way to break Minecraft, they've probably automated it. I mean, if you weren't paying attention, you might not even realize that I am in the nether right now and there's a giant hole perfectly carved in the roof of the nether. And that's not even the half of it. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get back on track. 12 world borders in about an hour. How did we do it? Starting off this journey is the overworld and the nether combined. If you've somehow been following my channel for about four years or so, you may remember a video that I released titled 30 million blocks in Minecraft in 60 seconds, wherein I cover a glitch that allows you to reach the world border in 60 seconds, a glitch found by yeah, Ray's works. Here's how it works. Under normal circumstances, when you exit a nether portal, your current coordinates in the nether are roughly multiplied by eight when you enter the overworld. And then when you return to the nether, they're divided by eight, creating a loop. However, in Minecraft release 1.9 through 1.12.1, which is the version of Minecraft that the Prototech server runs on, it was possible with ender pearls and nether portals to confuse Minecraft into multiplying or dividing your distance by eight without actually swapping dimensions at all. In this example, I start in the nether at negative 114x, 114z, and by executing this glitch, I get teleported to negative 914x, 914z in the nether. From there, 7,324, and then 58,592, followed by 468,750, and then 3,750,000, and finally 30 million. That's two, or no, four world borders in about a minute. I get questions about this a lot, and I feel that this is a fitting place to answer them. Now that we've touched two of the world borders within the nether, what happens when we exit through this portal? We are 30 million blocks out. Shouldn't this teleport us 240 million in the overworld? Is this gonna teleport us past the world border? Well, no. 
when going through another portal if the position your portal is going to appear in within the overworld exceeds 30 million minecraft just drops the portal pretty much at 30 million so when we exit the nether from this point we arrive at two of the overworld world borders so that makes four now how do we get out of here is there an easy way back to spawn that doesn't involve death well yes in much the same way that we can multiply our distance using the nether we can divide our distance using the same glitch performed in the overworld replicate this entire process for the positive x and negative z coordinates and that's eight world borders inside of only a couple of minutes eight down with by far the four most complicated and difficult to go the end dimension how do we get to the end dimensions world borders surely we're not gonna fly there that would take forever and we'd have to do it twice no the method that prototype came up with is absolutely brilliant and involves abusing the end dimensions gateway system in order to explain how they did it i have to lay some groundwork so within the end dimension exist three distinct types of gateway blocks type one which generate on the outside of the center island that lead you to the beginning of the outer ring islands when you kill the ender dragon type 2 which just lead you back to the type 1 gateway that you just entered through creating a gateway loop and then there's type 3 gateways which are the ones you randomly encounter while you're exploring the end looking for elytras shulker shells and things of that nature type 1 and type 2 gateways always naturally generate at either the main and island or the beginning of the outer ring but type 3 gateways are different they are just a one-way form of travel from wherever they generate to the obsidian platform that you appear on when you first enter the end and these these are abusable it's a little complicated to explain but let me try type 1 and type 2 gateways will always link to each other to allow for a two-way form of transportation between the center end island and the beginning of the outer end islands and type 3 will always be a one-way ticket back to the obsidian platform near the center end island however type 3 gateways spawn in predictable locations based on the chunk seed of the chunk that they appear in what the prototech team figured out is if by some means you're able to move a type 3 gateway away from where it generates which is possible if done on the same tick that the game populates it on it loses all of its block data becoming effectively a blank gateway if an entity then passes through this blank gateway the game gets a little confused and turns this now blank gateway into a type 1 gateway which will always link up to a type 2 gateway at the beginning of the outer end islands this means that prototech figured out how to create a two-way form of transportation between the world border and the beginning of the outer end islands over 29.9 million blocks apart now does this mean that prototech members had to fly to the world border to set all of this up <laughs> no they had machines do this for them specifically flying machines that would fly unattended all the way to the world border however these machines would have to stop on exactly the block that generated a gateway 29.998 million blocks away figuring out which block that would be was trivial but how do you stop a machine that's flying itself well by sending two machines a first slower one and then a second faster one to catch up with it and stop it somewhere around a hundred to a thousand blocks shy of the world border keep in mind these machines were launched about 29.998 million blocks away from their destination and these guys designed a pair of flying machines capable of stopping each other on an exact block specifically where an end gateway was going to spawn once the machine stopped it would then move the type 3 gateway that it just stopped on blanking it out and then pushing a carpet through the gateway changing it from a blank gateway to a type 1 gateway what happens next is pure joy 
Because of the setup that I just described, the Prototech server created a two-way form of transportation from the beginning of the Outer Ring Islands, which is only about a thousand blocks away from the end center, all the way to the world border, 30 million blocks away, connecting them. And they did this four times for the four different world borders. That's a minimum of eight flying machines that all had to stop on a dime, but they made it work. And just like that, we have traveled to all 12 world borders. Like I said before, these guys make the way in which I break Minecraft look like child's play. If learning the nitty gritty details about how projects like this form and work, I'll link to a couple of the videos by various Prototech members in the description down below. For now, that's all I've got. This has been a demonstration of what it takes to travel to all 12 world borders in unmodified vanilla survival Minecraft. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like on it because it would really help out myself, the channel, and the video quite a lot. So I hope you all enjoyed. My name is Ant Venom, and I bid you all farewell. Thanks so much for watching.